What's going on guys, it's Rahul again. Um, I have just got back from lectures, well not lectures, I had a lab from uh, 10 to 1. Uh, but I finished a little bit early, so it's around 12.30 now. And I'm back from my lab. And um, I thought I'd do a video today about what chemical engineering in the University of Birmingham actually involves. Um, I know I said I'd do a day in the life vlog, uh, which I did do yesterday, but I'm not satisfied that it completely shows a fair representation of what my day actually is like yet. So I want to work on that uh, video for a little bit longer. Uh, and once I'm satisfied that that is a video that I'd like to show you guys that will be released. It, I, it would take some time, but it won't take too long. So hang in there, it's coming. It's it's on the way, but it's not there just yet. And I'd like to give you the, uh, yeah, what I feel best shows what my day is like and what the course is like from a student's point of view um, in one day. So yeah, uh, but I'm gonna to talk to you about what chemical engineering is like, but first um, I'm gonna go eat some lunch. And once I've eaten lunch, we'll crack on with this video. First things first, we need to know what chemical engineering actually is. So, what is chemical engineering? Chemical engineering is the study of taking the reactions that you do in a lab in a test tube and beaker and scaling the process up so it can be done in a large reactor to make it financially viable for businesses to create products and sell it commercially. But what makes a lab different? Why is it so hard to scale up? To answer this question, I'm going to use an example. For example, let's assume a company wants to produce zinc chloride. We know for zinc chloride you need Zn, uh, zinc and hydrochloric acid. And the formula for that, as we know, is Zn plus 2HCl gives us ZnCO2 plus uh, H2, so hydrogen. The enthalpy of this reaction is 153.9 kilojoules per mole, which means that 153 kilojoules of heat is released every time one mole um, of ZnCO2 is formed. Uh, and this means that this reaction is exothermic. We have 153 kilojoules per mole of heat being released. A typical plant would be 100 kilomole per hour production rate of uh, zinc chloride. However, so that means per hour, 15,390,000 kilojoules of heat is being released. Now this means that 4,275 kilojoules of heat is being released every second, which can also be said as 4.3 megawatts. That means that if we could convert all of this uh, energy into electricity, we could power 2,500 homes. If we do not account for this energy that is in the reactor and we just let it loose, it could uh, cause disasters. And this could cause loss of life, which is the single worst thing that could happen on a chemical plant. Now, this was just an example of why chemical engineering is uh, important and uh, the kind of thing that you will learn on your course. However, you have to remember there is much, much more to learn in chemical engineering and it is a very vast subject. This next part of this video will be about what it is like to study chemical engineering at the University of Birmingham. I am a second year chemical engineering student in the first semester at the University of Birmingham. So this video will mainly focus on what it's like to study chemical engineering up to where I am right now. In the first year, there are seven modules. Modeling concepts and tools, process design and analysis, introduction to transport phenomena, properties and applications of materials, chemistry for engineers, and reaction equilibria and thermodynamics. The six modules I mentioned are chemical engineering modules. The last module, the seventh module, is a module of your choice. It is a non-chemical engineering related module. Modeling and Concepts and Tools is a 20 credit module. It is designed to fill the gap between A-level maths and the uni maths you will use. Um, one thing I will note about this module is that if you've done further maths, the jump is smaller between uh, uni maths and further maths. So uh, modeling and concepts and tools does a lot of work that has already been done in further maths. The next module is process design and analysis. 
This is a 20 credit module. Um, it teaches you the foundation skills in designing your own process plants and it also uh, teaches you the skills required to simulate your process plant in the basic level to make, keep track of all mass and energy going in and out of your system. Uh, they do this by teaching you about mass and energy balances. The next module we're going to talk about is Introduction to Transport Phenomena. Now this is a 20 credit module and it uh, revolves around applying the maths that you learn in modeling concepts and tools and applying it to chemical engineering. Um, you learn a lot of mechanics such as mass and heat transfer as well as the behavior of fluids going through different types of pipe systems. This next module is called Properties and Applications of Materials. It is a 10 credit module which revolves around learning the skills to choose uh, suitable materials for different applications. So for example, you'll be given an application of a product and you would be required to choose a suitable material to make that out of. Uh, you learn about properties such as materials and whether they are hard, tough, strong, flexible and brittle. Yes, hard, tough and strong are all different properties. The next module we're going to talk about is chemistry for engineers. Now this is another 10 credit module and this covers uh, topics such as reaction mechanisms, analytic techniques such as enema and mass spectrometry and it also covers thermodynamics. Uh, but this thermodynamics is a more practical um, version of thermodynamics. The last module of chemical engineering in uh, first year is reaction equilibria and thermodynamics. This is another 20 credit module. It is a triple barrel module so it has three different parts. The first part is reactors and the math behind reactions. The second part is equilibrium between different substance phases such as solid and gas, liquid and gas, and um, solid and liquid. And then the third part is just more thermodynamics, but this is more theory based. And that brings us to the end of the first year. The first year is made of a total of 120 credits. A hundred of these credits are required to pass. You get all credits in a module if you get 40% or above. And um, the grade from the first year does not count to the degree grade. However, you do require you are required to pass if you want to go into the second year. And so now we will move on to discuss the modules that we have in the second year. You have to remember the grade from this year counts towards your degree grade at the end. There are seven more modules. The this first year, module is and mass all of these modules are transport. related to chemical engineering. Now this module is just an extension to introduction to transport phenomena and it is made up of 20 credits. There's not much more I can say because uh, you'll need to understand things from first year before I can, you'll understand what I'm talking about here. This next module is process integration and unit operations. Now this module is all about optimization of process systems. Uh, so you work on how to increase the efficiency and reduce the cost of different, of different processes. And this module is made up of 20 credits. This next module is about process systems and principles of process control. Now in this module you learn about uh, how to control systems in real time in order to uh, fix any unexpected errors that occur during the process. And this module is again 20 credits. This next module is computing for design. In computing for design you learn how to model process systems on a computer. Um, you can you use software such as MATLAB, Pro2 and Excel to model these systems and it is designed because some of the problems that you do say in introduction to transport phenomena or mass, heat and momentum transport cannot be done by hand and requires computer to solve these problems. This next model is called uh, sustainable process engineering. Uh, this module teaches us how to reduce the harm to the environment by changing our designs while keeping businesses viable. It also teaches us how to analyze products and uh, work out how much damage each product is doing to the environment. And this is because we actually do care about the environment, unlike uh, what the media tries to portray. This module is also worth 20 credits. The sixth module in second year of chemical engineering is reactors, catalysis and thermodynamics. This module is basically just more thermodynamics, but you also learn about different types of reactors and its different parts to help you uh, design reactors in the future. Uh, this module is also worth 20 credits. The last module is a uh, product design exercise. Uh, this module is worth 10 credits and it is done in term two. 
and therefore I haven't done it yet, so I can't tell you much about it. And I'm not even sure whether I am allowed to tell you about it. So um, that's all I'm going to say about this module. And that brings us to the end of year two. Um, so I am going to end this uh, video here. Make sure to like, comment and subscribe on this video. Um, share it with your friends if you think anyone is interested in chemical engineering or wants to go to the University of Birmingham. And also, let me, you can always leave any questions down in the comments below. I'll reply to you as soon as I can. Alright guys, thank you for watching. Um, I'll see you next time.